Yo, Adam Saxon with Gyna Cube, and this is the last weekly roundup for 2020. Yes, 2020 is almost over. We're almost there. And we've got some awesome community posts, plus some last minute updates to just close off the year from a Power BI perspective and Microsoft as a whole. Also, you'll notice that there's a donate area there. This month, we are doing a giving campaign to help feed those that need it, both from hurricane relief as well as COVID-19. So if you have the ability, please do help donate to the World Central Kitchen to help feed those that need it in this season of giving. And with that, let's dig in. Greg Petrosian's got a blog looking at why Excel needs this is something where, you know, you're a heavy Excel user and you're like, nope, Excel is my life. I'm going to live there and that's where I want all my data. Then look at this blog post and just see what Power BI brings to the table beyond what Excel can do. You can still take advantage of a lot of great Excel features from a Power BI perspective, and Greg walks you through those. All the way from analyzing Excel to just connecting to Power BI data sets, the data type capabilities, data protection information, all of those things come together to really enhance Excel's experience, and Power BI is at the heart of that. So even though you don't want to use the Power BI reports, you still want to use your pivot table, you can still take advantage of Power BI. So check out Greg's blog and see what all of those items are. James Sarah's got a blog where he's looking at the new announcement of Azure Purview. This is really the next generation of Azure Data Catalog. And this is something that you need to pay attention to, especially if you're an enterprise customer and you're looking to catalog the data that's in your organization and understand lineage between those items. This allows the scanning of data sources to understand what's going on there. It ties in with Microsoft information protection. It ties in with Power BI. And these are all things you can use to just help understand where your data is flowing, right? This is something that a lot of enterprise customers want. And Azure Purview is hoping to solve that problem for you. From a Power BI perspective, it has deep tie-ins with Azure Purview. The two teams are working together to make sure that this experience works, not only from the Azure Purview side, but also that you can see that and take advantage of it from inside of Power BI, which is awesome. I can't wait to when all of these items are really realized and available in the products. James walks you through what Azure Purview actually does and what it is. So if you're curious, take a look at that. I've also got a link in the description for the actual Purview announcement from the Power BI side. So you can take a look at that as well. Links as always in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Last Friday, Reed Havens over at Havens Consulting did a live stream with Daniel Otakire where they looked at Tabular Editor 3. Marco Russo actually mentioned it on one of our live streams, and now Daniel is actually walking through what Tabular Editor 3 brings to the table. So this is really exciting. There's a lot of cool aspects inside of it. I love the DAX editor. I love that you can do things from an offline perspective as well as being connected to your data set or model. And it's just, it looks clean. It looks like a real developer interface. Uh, really looks a lot like Visual Studio. I don't know if it's actually using the VS Shell or something else, uh, but it looks really nice. So if you're interested in the the actual details of this, this is a longer video because it's an actual, it, think of it like a presentation on Tabular Editor 3. It's well worth the watch. Definitely check it out. Links down below. And also I've got a link up above here. There was a blog announcement about report attachment capabilities for subscriptions of Power BI reports. We've had this for paginated reports, but when you did report subscriptions for Power BI reports, it was just an email with an image and that was it. And then you could link back to the actual report. But now there's actually report attachment capability. So you can do a PDF or a PowerPoint attachment. One thing to call out is this does require that the content be backed by either premium capacity or premium per user. And if a premium per user does a subscription for someone else, the pro user will get that attachment. But if they go to click on that link, it will require them to have a premium per user license if it's a premium per user workspace. So all the normal licensing rules apply. Just know that you can give the attachments out to folks that are just pro users. And if it's backed by premium, then your life is good. Definitely check it out. It should be available for all tenants in all regions at this point from a commercial side. And 
let us know how you feel. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried it out and what you think. We got an update to the on-premises data gateway. And one thing that made this really cool is that Azure Cosmos DB is now available as a data source for the gateway. That means if you're using Azure Cosmos DB and it's sitting inside like a VNet, Power BI can't get to it, you can now route it through the gateway to just help with that situation, which is awesome. So we had one before where we had Google BigQuery and now we've got Azure Cosmos DB. I'm still eagerly awaiting VNet injection for Power BI Premium. So just make sure you've updated to the latest gateway and you will get the benefits of using Cosmos DB through the gateway. We've got a blog announcement about admin API support for service principles. This has been a long time coming. A lot of folks have wanted this. When you're trying to automate things, you want to do this from a service principle perspective and not a named user because it's just more secure, right? I don't want an individual user being used for automation purposes. You know, what if they leave? What if they're out on sick leave or whatever, right? We want a service principle that could be managed in the appropriate way from a central team and use that against the admin APIs to do that automation. And that's available now. It says tenant setting that is available. Check out the blog post for all the details and have fun automating. All right, I wanna hand it over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.